Hello guys and welcome back to another Fun Factory Friday tour and today we're going to be checking out a fantastic 5x5 hardcore challenge build by Respawn Repeat. Now the 5x5 rule set can be found on satisfactorytips.com should you wish to check it out along with this save. But to give you a basic understanding, the hardcore 5x5 requires everything to be manufactured inside a 5x5 grid as well as all the power produced inside of it as well. That's the general premise, but there are more rules to it. Also, do check out Respawn Repeat's Twitch. I'll put a link in the description below. Outside of the challenge, we have a few noticeable things. A Fixmus 5x5 factory with its own power and storage area, as well as multiple floors for producing the various items and outside of this, we have the main material buses as well. I must admit, I really like the dark turquoise color with the golden yellow tints. The bus is enclosed and makes use of foundation clipping to give the feeling that everything is on a ground conveyor, which I think looks pretty clean. I also really appreciate the use of glass and the extra space for walkways and all of these conveyors converge on the lower floors of the 5x5 to be brought up in the logistics of the factory. You can also find a second resource bus running to the factory and a water farm and the whole system looks pretty clean and I must admit I love walking through the lower level of the 5x5 to see the space elevator opposite. Finding ourselves on the lower levels you can use the hypertube to travel halfway up the factory, alternatively you can use the ladder but bear in mind this factory hits the sky limit so you'll have a long climb ahead of you. The first few floors are dedicated to bauxite and aluminium production and it's important to note that with this being the 5x5 factory, the idea is not to produce a huge amount of resources but enough for what you need. This factory must have taken a lot of planning especially with putting the later tier resources at the bottom of the factory and between the production floors we have logistic floors and the factory units are all overclocked as and when required. I also love the use of glass in here, there's enough to keep it looking clean and open without it being overkill. The following floors produce the silica for the factory before reaching a reset floor where excess resources are sunk and with the factory producing just enough resources, respawns being able to mix the later tier items on a Mark V belt which is super important in a build like this to maximise the amount of production that you can fit in your factory because as with everything, you'll be limited by the factory's logistics and the space that you have available. At this point, we have our first storage area, which has all the basic ingredients that we need for building. And again, we have another hypertube that allows us to head up to the next storage area in the factory, or we can use the, the ladders. If we continue up the factory, we can find ourselves at the smelting floors. Now at this point, there is another great point to be made. The logistics floors aren't just for transporting resources back and forth, but are also used for underfloor feeding of the manufacturing above. This allows for much tighter production lines, allowing you to pack more buildings to each floor. And the feeding really does stand out as possibly one of the cleanest compact building designs that I've actually seen. Even if Respawn does use clipping to make it look like this. But when it comes to a factory as compact as this, due to the hardcore rule set, I can understand the reasoning behind the design choice. And at this point, we are reaching the main production floors and we're actually not far off reaching the fog limit. So at this point, we are going to have to turn off the fog and from the outside, I want to take a moment looking at the outside design. With the 5x5 rules, you can add foundations on the outside, providing there's no production happening. And that's exactly what Respawn has done here, so as to give the factory a less blocky look. Now that I've mentioned it, you may have noticed that for both oil and water lines, despite this being a huge building, there are no pumps and this has been done by the production of a water and crude oil tower. This is a simple idea that I've shown off in previous videos, I'll put the link in the top right hand corner now, um, which makes use of head lift in one location to give all attached pipelines the same head lift. 
Similar to how a water tower would work in real life, yes it shouldn't work in this game due to the addition of other resource inputs, but that's how it works in game. And if we head over to the center of the map, you'll see the water tower working away and I must admit I love the circular build. The resources are done in tiers as we go up the factory, so as you can see we've gone from smelting to constructors, then onto our assembler floors and once again up to the manufacturers. This is the best way to do it as you do not want to be moving resources up and down the factory floors and as this takes a huge amount of space for the logistics which you really just don't have when you're attempting the hardcore variant. Once we pass through the manufacturers we actually find ourselves at another reset floor where excess items are being sunk once again. This saves you taking excess resources back down to the bottom of the build and above this we have our storage area where late game resources are being stored such as the supercomputer, radio control units and turbo motors. Here you can take another hypertube up to the next resource floor and in between we have all the late tier manufacturers running slowly and at this point we have a huge amount of empty space which is pretty incredible given how compact the rest of the factory is but you're probably wondering at this point, where's all the power coming from? Well, once again with the hardcore rule set, as I mentioned, it all needs to be produced inside the 5x5 build and this is where our power plant section begins. The following floors have 28 fuel generators that are overclocked contributing to a total of 7800 megawatts of power which is not bad and due to the size of the generators, Respawn has had to mix oil production on the floors alongside the fuel generators which once again gives us some pretty cool looking compact builds above the floor where we can see the diluted packaged fuel being produced and unpackaged along with the empty canisters being recycled to produce di the diluted packaged fuel again. A huge amount of work must have gone into setting each of these floors up and though the rest of the floors are identical, the last floor has a small buffer for all the water and crude oil using the pumps only to help the liquid get to the very top floor just below to save the power usage thanks to the head lift from the water and crude tower um, that we saw earlier. Using these pumps at the top also stops backflow and makes for an incredibly well built and compact system. But that brings the tour to the close. If you did enjoy it, please do hit the thumbs up. And if you do want to check out the save yourself, jump over to satisfactorytips.com. I'll put the article link in the description below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you to our amazing supporters. Most notably our Solar Eclipse Patreons The Calamity and Cerebral Tag, as well as our Lunar Eclipse Patreons Chris McCabe and Lord of July, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Kareev Johnny. Anyway guys, until next time, as always, ciao for now.